everyone. Tonight, the library is excited to partner with Crosspoint Human Services to provide information on some timely topics. Natalia Bourne will be sharing some symptoms to watch for seasonal depression, as well as some strategies for addressing mental wellness. Um, Crosspoint Human Services offers a wide variety of um, help for people in Danville, um, from social services to um, daily count or the day-to-day -day kind of counseling that people would need. All right, and Natalia, you have the Zoom room. Thank you, Taylor. Um, thank you, uh, Kendra, for being here. Um, and thank you to the Danville Public Library for um, asking us to um, participate in this mental health check-in. Um, I had a couple, I'll tell you a bit about, about me and who I am. Um, and before we get started, again, as Ms. Taylor said that I am, my name's Natalia. Um, I'm a licensed professional counselor. I'm also a, a national board certified counselor um, at Cross Point. I uh, work mainly with children. Um, I do, I am getting more adults. Um, I have been getting more adult clients as the uh, pandemic goes on and it's been very interesting um, and it's been, it's been a good ride. Um, I am also um, going to be hopefully this year um, getting my uh, independent license. I'm pretty excited about that. So I keep my fingers crossed. Um, so there are a couple of points that I wanted to kind of bring into um, the Zoom room tonight. And the main point is um, we're going to discuss uh, some things of manage some symptoms and some ways to treat seasonal depression. Um, talking about how to build a support network and then um, ways to just address overall mental health and uh, wellness, um, which right now I think there are many uh, individuals who are struggling um, in this area. So as therapists, we diagnose according to the DSM-5. Um, in previous um, coding uh, textbooks, um, it used to be called seasonal affective disorder, um, very appropriately uh, initialed SAD, um, SAD, and, um, but now in the new revised DSM-5, it is major depressive disorder um, with a seasonal pattern. Um, this can um, happen to anyone of any age, um, but it mainly occurs um, among uh, women and men, 18, ages 18 to 30. Um, like I said, it can happen to anyone. Um, you also notice that during the fall and winter months is um, when seasonal depression occurs. Um, some, I'm going to share my PowerPoint so that I can kind of give you some uh, visual. If you have a pen and paper and you want to write some of these things down, please feel free to do that. Um, so I'm going to share this with you really quickly. All right. So there is my name with all the letters behind it. <laughs> um, I will see how many more letters I can put behind them behind that name. Uh, okay, so major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern. Um, if you look on the left, you'll see under the uh, symptoms list. Uh, these are some of the symptoms that you might come across. Uh, loss of interest, um, change in appetite, all of these things um, you may notice, um, but you may also notice no motivation um, or, or less motivation than you um, are normally accustomed to. Um, you may also notice that um, you are uh, have trouble when it says change in appetite, you may notice that you're eating too much or you're not eating at all, or maybe I've heard some clients say that they forgot to eat. Um, you don't think about it. Um, these are some of the symptoms that you might notice. 
and when it gets very severe, you may notice um, thoughts of suicide. And at that point, um, you need to connect with someone and call um, a crisis hotline or uh, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at that point. Um, sometimes the symptoms, they occur gradually. Um, and so when individuals know that that this is something that occurs for them, um, you want to try to uh, address it as soon as you notice your symptoms change. Um, so there, there's this, what we call a baseline. Um, that means that's your normal mood, your normal affect. If you notice the symptoms, um, and this is not all of them, this is just a little snapshot, um, but if you notice a change in your mood, behavior, um, in, in a negative uh, direction, then you know that your, um, you know that you're um, becoming depressed and you know that um, your affect and mood has changed. So you know that maybe I should get some help. Um, and it's okay to connect with those networks and it's okay to, um, which I will talk about later on how to do that. And um, it's okay to, to feel that way, but if you notice a change in your baseline and your normal mood and affect, um, that may tell you that, hey, something's wrong here, okay? Our mind and body has a way of warning us uh, when things go wrong um, or when things are just not quite right and you don't feel balanced. Um, so when you know your baseline and you feel a change in your mood or behavior, that's the time to maybe address that. Um, some treatments for major depressive disorder um, are things such as talk therapy. Um, and the CBT stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, which is a form of therapy um, that focuses a lot on uh, the neurological aspect of um, the mind. And um, there are different interventions that go along with that. Um, to talk about that will be a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother presentation, but um, SSRIs are selective um, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which is just a class of drugs um, that are antidepressants. Uh, normally now I don't, um, with my clients, I do not push uh, the medications up front because I like them to take a holistic approach. Um, I would like them to try some of the skills, some of the interventions um, that I give them, and I really want them to try. Um, and then if that doesn't work, um, I normally give them a quarter or two quarters at maybe three every uh, three months we check in. We do a risk assessment. We do a review. And, and at that time, if they still haven't been able to manage symptoms, and they still haven't been able to um, get their moods under control, then at that point, then I would say, okay, maybe you need to see um, a psychiatrist to kind of prescribe you some SSRIs, um, which is basically helps us to feel good. Um, it has that serotonin is that main aspect. It's the feel good hormone. Um, it allows us to be happy um, and feel satisfied. Um, in some uh, in some respect, and so um, there are several several types of antidepressants. Um, I encourage you not to diagnose yourself and go on Wikipedia and <laughs> and Google any uh, medications and say, "Hey, I think this is what's wrong with me. This is what I need," um, because your psychiatrist will probably say no. <laughs> so I'll give you that. Uh, you never want to diagnose yourself. But like I said, if you feel like um, your normal mood and affect is changing in a way uh, that it's uh, pretty far abnormal from what you're used to, you definitely want to pay attention to it and notice the change. Um, light therapy, uh, it is a form of therapy that um, is used a lot for, um, or quite often uh, for seasonal affective disorder specifically. Um, I've only used it once with a client. So um, I wanted to, um, this particular client was going through some major bouts of depression and everything I was trying just wasn't working. Um, and so I wanted to try the light therapy, which basically um, a client will sit in front of a light 
um, that's very bright um, without, it's kind of, it's supposed to resemble the sunlight without the UV rays. And they sit in front of this light box for about 20 minutes. Um, they kind of want to do it every day for 20 minutes. So you, they may want to have one at home. Um, but the thing with the light therapy is um, you definitely have to consult with your doctor before um, using this um, as it uh, has not yet been FDA approved. So um, it's definitely something that um, you first want to check with your doctor first and then um, communicate that with a therapist um, that does the light therapy. But um, like I said, it mimics sunlight and um, many times when um, individuals become depressed between the fall and the winter months um, is because it's lack of, lack of sunlight. Um, and so the light therapy kind of um, mimics that and um, is, uh, has been known to help with seasonal depression. Um, also, seasonal depression is not like uh, you may have heard it called the winter blues, but it's a little bit, a little bit um, more severe than that. Um, you can go from being happy and active to completely um, isolated. And if, um, if you notice that and you notice those around you saying that, hey, what's wrong? That's really a, a key to kind of look in, and check in with yourself to see, hey, um, what's happening? Is something wrong? Because um, sometimes we don't see it at first, but those, our loved ones, our friends, those people that are connected to us often will notice that. And so when that happens, it's, it's really important to check in with yourself, do a self-evaluation and see, hey, um, am I okay? Has something changed? And um, know where to go for help. Um, which is a really good segue into uh, the last point on the treatments of being attentive um, to your general health. Do, do your regular checkups. Make sure you're going, um, doing your physicals. Um, once a year or every six months or um, however often uh, you check in in your physical health. Make sure that you're eating right or you're paying attention to your change in appetite. Um, make sure that you're getting enough sleep. Um, it's really important to at least get six to eight hours of sleep. Um, it's really important to kind of pay attention to these things. And if you're not sleeping, that's something to address too. Um, not being able to fall asleep or not being able to stay asleep once you do fall asleep. Um, exercise is a really good way to um, cope with things. It really does a good job of increasing those serotonin levels. Um, so um, when you exercise, you get that feeling of, oh man, I'm, I feel better. That's that increase in serotonin right there. Um, and it, it makes you feel good. Um, and as I said before, the serotonin is the feel-good hormone, um, and that and that's kind of what we want to what we want to be. We want to feel good um, and be happy in our in our own state. If you have questions as I go along, feel free to kind of chime in. If you want to, um, you can put in the chat box. Um, if you want to, um, I'm going to check the chat box. Okay. No questions there. Um, so welcome for those who have just uh, come in. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are going on to um, talk about uh, a support network and why that's important. Um, like I said, if you have questions, just kind of put it in the chat box or um, I think there's a feature where you can raise a hand um, and you can ask questions as we go along. Okay. Um, I mentioned a support network earlier when I was talking about treatments, okay? Um, I really wanna kind of hone in on this because right now with us having to be at home, it's really hard to um, develop new relationships um, because we can't go out and um, we have to really be creative uh, in building relationships. So the internet um, is, is very useful um, for that, and I'll get to that in just a second, but just kind of put that um, in the back of your mind. Have, have access to the internet, um, especially with us having to be at home because it can be your lifeline um, 
to outside. So the natural supports are anyone in your family. Um, it could be your pastor, it could be friends, um, it could be an agency, a caseworker, someone that you're working with outside of your home. These are your natural supports. Um, and it's so important to connect with them um, because when you're not able to see a counselor, if you're not able, if you're not feeling well, these are the people um, that you're gonna try to connect with. You're gonna give them a call. You're gonna try to communicate with them in some way um, and uh, lean into the relationship. Um, there are clients that I have that don't have anyone at all and um, no family, no friends, very little supports, very limited supports, and it gets really difficult. And in that, it will um, kind of increase those symptoms of depression. Um, when you feel like you don't have anyone, when you feel those, um, when you feel lonely and uh, like you, you just don't have anyone to kind of call and lean on. Um, so it's really important to build that. Ways to do that, we're gonna go back into our file cabinet and pull out that little point about the um, using the internet as a, as a resource and meet in social media. Um, right now, social media is, is a huge way that people are connecting with others, um, joining groups, um, using things such as Facebook to join groups and talk to people and family and friends. Um, it's a way to connect when you can't connect outside of your home. Um, being able to research things and um, and you and being able to kind of use uh, elements such as Zoom uh, to connect with friends. Um, there are a lot of fun ways. Also, um, I just recently heard of um, doing a watch party, um, using Netflix and doing a watch party where everyone's in their own home, but you all are able to like watch a movie together. Um, these are all ways that you build relationships. Um, with others. And uh, it's really important to do that, especially now um, in the, during this pandemic. So um, also identifying your interest. Um, what do you like? What are things that you're good at? What is something that you want to try? Um, identify these things. Um, what is it that you like to do at home? Do you like to read? Do you like to listen to music? Um, are you one that likes to organize? Are there projects that need to be um, done at home that you didn't have time to do um, pre-COVID? Um, these are things to kind of identify and notice uh, what it is that I need to do. Also, um, <clears throat> using your internet to research things in your community that are still going on during COVID because there are some things that are still happening. A lot of things are virtual, so you definitely um, want to pay attention to that. But then there are some um, some elements that are not and that you can actually get out of the house and um, engage in. Uh, there are a lot of um, a lot of groups that are following the social distance things and um, that you can still kind of see people in person and, con and contact face to face. Uh, so pay attention to those. Google is a good tool to do that. Um, using your supports to also find interest and in building that network um which co which is a great segue to communicate you must communicate you must say hey you know about this group and what's going on um listening to the radio they give a lot of websites on where links and things to go to oh don't, don't forget to to use your voice and talk um you no one knows if you're going through something if you don't speak up on it uh you must definitely speak on the issue. If you're, not, if you're feeling imbalanced, say that. Um, use your supports for that. Um, don't, don't feel like you're a burden and holding things in because it'll kind of be like, you know, a pop can that you put in a freezer. If it, if, if it doesn't come out in a certain amount of time, it's going to explode because um, it's just going to, the pressure is going to get to you. So communicate. Um, and don't be afraid to do that. And if you don't know how to do that, say that. It's okay to say, I'm not sure how to say this, or I'm not sure how to explain this. It's totally okay to do that. Um, and if your supports are, are um, genuine, then they'll understand um, and be able to kind of um, get where you're coming from. So definitely communicate um, what's, what the problems are. 
if you're having those issues. Even if you feel like something is off, talk about it. It's okay to talk about it. Um, if you don't have those supports, like I mentioned earlier, there are people who don't have any and, and really find it difficult to develop them, even with using the internet and social media. It gets really difficult to kind of um, just have the confidence uh, to, to talk and to try to develop new relationships. So group therapy becomes um, an option. I like to, um, <clears throat> I definitely like to encourage clients to use group therapy. Um, there are many different types of group therapy and they just kind of choose one that's best for them. Right now at Crosspoint, we have several um, groups that are going on and I like to encourage clients to take part in those, engage in those. Um, pick, there, we have different um, brochures that they can look at to see if that group is appropriate for them. Because you definitely want to um, join a group that may be appropriate, even if it's for socializing. Um, we have art therapy, we have meditation, we have parenting group, um, grief all of these things and, and grief is really important at this time as COVID has taken away a lot of our loved ones and so grief is a group that you can join to just build um, a support network um, and even if you have a support network you know it's a way to kind of develop new relationships so you definitely want to hone in on that and um, continue to build just because we're having to stay at home does not mean that um, you can't build new relationships that can be done. You just have to put a little bit of effort into it. Um, and if that confidence is kind of minimal, um, then you, that's where you want to use your support system and your support network. Um, and if you don't have one, then you want to see a therapist to kind of help you um, to, to learn how to build that confidence um, to help you get a little bit past that fear. Um, uh, that comes with lack of confidence, okay? If there are any questions, we can move on. All of these things you'll see will connect um, with each other. So the strengths, knowing your strengths, knowing what you're good at, what you like. Um, I like to listen to music. I like to organize. Um, I like to clean my house. Um, these are things that I, I truly enjoy doing. And so um, I like to be with my family and my friends. And um, I like to talk on the phone. <laughs> so <laughs> these are things that I like to do. Um, a lot of times with my clients, I always try to um, address their strengths. Um, and, and it can be anything, anything that you enjoy, and it can be something that you, an interest that you're wanting to do. Um, if you thought of taking up knitting and says some, not something you've ever done before, okay, try it um, if you're able. Your strengths turn into um, coping skills, um, exercising, um, getting out, using the good weather that we've had so far, um, I guess before this week <laughs> that we've had to get out and take a walk. Um, even uh, if you like the, the brisk cold air, step outside. Um, sometimes I like to kind of just step outside on my porch and just um, feel the, the, the air and, and the weather. So you know your strengths. And if you don't, try to identify some new strengths. Um, it, it can be quite fun to try to just gain those um, those new activities um, and trying something that you have not tried before. Um, bringing in those networks, right? Bringing in that friendship, bringing in that, um, um, those agencies maybe that you work with or case managers, you know, using those people and things to build upon um, so that, you know, you don't feel that sense of loneliness um, because that could just kind of creep up on you and um, next thing you know, you're crying out of nowhere, you know. Um, you're having those racing thoughts, you're having those um, depressive um, thoughts that kind of, you know, interrupt your daily functioning. And um, it kind of circles back around into those depressive states. And you definitely 
uh, want to pay attention, pay attention to those changes. Um, and, you know, I, I think if you have a very solid support system, you definitely can uh, hone in on, on that um, as much as you need to. Um, having a, a general overall mental wellness is so important to continue on every day, um, even when you notice that things are not going array, to kind of look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Um, most of the time our minds will focus more on the negative aspects or what, of what's going on instead of the positive. Uh, it's really, really important to kind of retrain your mind. Um, and when those negative thoughts come about, then you want to kind of switch it out with, hey, um, goodness, it's raining today and I, I, I don't feel like going out. But you know what? You know, if I do go, I still, I can get my errands done. I can get things um, that I need to be accomplished and then come home. You know, just little simple things. Um, it doesn't have to be anything um, too heavy. You definitely just want to, you know, think of the little things, the simple things that you can do in your day um, to kind of add to the positivity, that mental wellness. Um, if you're not mentally well, um, that, that also affects your physical. Um, when individuals are depressed and stressed, that stress can be so severe that it affects your physical body. And so if you're not taking care of your mental health, then um, you risk the chance of diminishing your physical health as well. Um, people who have been overly stressed have been known to have heart attacks or um, trigger some underlying um, uh, comorbidity, some underlying uh, medical issue. Um, mental health and wellness is so important because you don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to put yourself in the hospital um, because your mental health is wavering. So you definitely want to pay attention, pay attention to yourself um, and pay attention to any signs and symptoms and changes in your baseline. Uh, you definitely want to um, identify where you're, where you're falling, okay? Where those symptoms are increasing, okay? Um, being creative. I mentioned earlier, be creative. Try something you haven't tried before. Now, um, I can't think of anything that I haven't tried yet, <laughs> but I'm hoping that um, I can try something I haven't tried. I've been trying to find something because I try to dibble dabble in different things <laughs> um, and painting and, um, and, and I love to read. So that's something, um, oh, I, I did a podcast for the first time. I listened to a podcast um, that a friend recommended. So that was pretty fun. Um, and I, I enjoyed listening to the podcast. And so I tried another one. Um, that's another thing. If you get recommendations from someone and you try it, you might like it and you may try it again. Um, and you may continue to um, build upon uh, that recommendation. And that's kind of fun. Um, even though we're, we're having to stay home and things are um, kind of, you know, uh, they're not the same as what we're used to for sure. Um, but there are ways to uh, continue to maintain your mental health and wellness. Um, therapy, I'm very um, biased, okay, because I love therapy. So <laughs> I recommend therapy to anyone. Um, you don't have to, um, you don't have to be at a severe uh, mental state to get therapy. Um, therapy is all about connecting uh, with someone and, and working on those areas where you feel like you're kind of faltering a little bit. Um, and sometimes uh, I've had clients just use therapy just to talk, just to vent where, to someone who's, who's not judging them and in a safe, a safe environment where they can just be free um, to let go of some things that they've been holding on to. Um, so use that and, and have fun. Um, that, that's one of my, my uh, last points. I always tell my clients to have fun, try to make fun in anything uh, that you're doing because in, in the end, that's what's gonna really um, increase that serotonin and it's gonna help you to feel good. 
uh, and that's that's kind of the end game. You definitely want to feel good, um, and uh, even even when things don't look like they're going well, um, it, when when we're out here and we're at, during this pandemic and we're having to um, adjust uh, and wear a mask and 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 do online groceries and and not go to restaurants and. Uh, that that can be very uh, detrimental to some people, especially if they're really social. Uh, so, you know, all of these things kind of connect, they all connect with each other. Um, you definitely want to use them uh, and use uh, your strengths, use your supports and take care of you. Um, it's like they say on an airplane, you know, put on your mask first before you put on your child or someone next to you. Um, because you definitely have to take care of you first before you can take care of anyone else. Um, if you're not mentally well, then um, you you can't be there for someone else. You must be there for yourself first. Um, I want to give a chance to, I'm going to check my time. I want to give a chance to if, for anybody to um, ask questions if you want, um, if at all. Are there any questions? I know I kind of, hopefully I didn't go too, too fast, but I like to kind of give an opportunity for questions. Okay, so I have a little something that I um, want to share with you all. I, I did say have fun, right? Okay, so I Definitely, there's some music that I like to uh, listen to sometimes. I call it happy music. And um, I'm going to uh, try to share that with you. Um, the music is powerful in that way that it can change and alter uh, your mood and uh, make you feel good and kind of has a way of kind of um, increasing that uh, serotonin. And so um, I wanted to share a song uh, that kind of when I hear it, it helps me, it makes me feel good. It makes me want to dance. It makes me want to, you know, move around. And so I'm going to share that with you. And so um, also I want to give you guys a chance to kind of write down here some resources. Um, I'll leave that up for a minute for you to kind of write down if you want. Um, there's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Um, Crosspoint, we do offer individual uh, couples and group counseling. Um, so there's that. I actually conduct a uh, men the meditation group, um, mindfulness meditation. Um, I do that every Thursday bi-weekly, every other Thursday evening and um, for about 45 minutes. And I have... Uh, individuals who really enjoy um, coming to um, to the meditation group. Um, there are, that's a particular intervention and skill that I also kind of encourage some of my clients to engage in um, for those with high anxiety. It also helps with depression and um, kind of being able to manage, helping individuals manage those symptoms so that they can reduce the intensity and the frequency um, of those symptoms when they arise. Um, also, Crosspoint does um, accept um, most insurances, uh, private and there are all the forms of Medicaid. Um, so I would like any individuals that are interested in coming to counseling to know that um, that is available and uh, insurance does cover that. I know for Medicaid clients, it, there's an unlimited amount um, of therapy. There is no cap on that right now. For private insurances, it just depends on which insurance company you have. Um, there may be a cap on how many sessions that you can, that we can provide you. And if you want more, that would be something that you would probably need a, a prior authorization to do, but that is something that you wanna take up with your um, specific insurance company. Okay. 
So here's one of the songs I want to share with you. Something that makes me feel good um, when I see it, when I hear it. Um, there's a lot of happy songs, uh, but this one's one of my favorites. So I'm going to share it with you. Hopefully you can hear it. This is one of those. <laughs> I can't see anybody, so I don't know if you're dancing. <laughs> That's one of my <laughs> one of one of my songs I like to when I hear it, it doesn't matter where I am, I wanna I wanna get down and some moves and I'm not a dancer. So <laughs> but I just I act like nobody's watching. And so um it's important to really just keep an out a, a positive outlook on life as a whole also to help out with your uh, mental wellness. Um, if you're always thinking of negative, you'll always feel that way. Um, and if you think of things in a different light and really reframe your thoughts, uh, that really helps to um, look at, have a different perspective um, on life and things that are happening and know that you're going to run into some issues and some problems. You're going to run into situations that maybe you're not sure how to, um, how to handle. And, and, and that's okay, that's gonna happen. Um, but knowing how to react to those situations is, is important. Um, are you gonna fall down and not get back up? Or are you gonna say, hey, I'm gonna get some help. I don't feel well, things aren't going well. I'm gonna lean into my supports um, and, and see how that will help me because it can't do anything but help, um, especially if you have a pretty solid support system. Um, I'm lucky enough to to have a support system that um, I can call, I can go bother and bug anytime, and uh, I, I can kind of lay out any frustrations that I have, um, any fears, and, and that really is helpful in knowing that you have um, that support to kind of help you at those in those times. Um, and so mental health is, is, is wealth, so you definitely um, always pay attention to your mind, your body, your soul, and when you see a change, you definitely want to seek help, um, whether it be professional or your friends and family. Um, are there any questions so far? We don't have any that have come up in the chat, but if anybody um, needs unmuted, I can unmute you if you have any questions. Ask some questions if you want. I'm not going to push you to ask questions, but because um, I know how that can be. <laughs> um, but I will um, put back up uh, my contact information. Uh, so if you want to email um, or if you want to post your information in the chat, I can write it. I can take it also. Um, and I can always answer any questions that you have at a later date. And that's okay also. Um, and Taylor, thank you um, for having me. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity and Crosspoint um, partnering with us. We really appreciate it. I always like to kind of get information out to the community. And so thank you so much for that. Thank you so much, Natalia. It was really good and really useful information too. I'm glad that we'll have this to have. <laughs> Hi, thanks. I hope, I hope it was helpful. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, I, I see a hand up. Thank you, Kendra. Kendra, your hand up. Okay. Is that is that a clap? Looks like Kendra. Um, go ahead and unmute 
Ah, you're just clapping. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Kendra. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hopefully this was helpful. I, um, like I said, I like to give out as much information okay, as I can. So increase those serotonin, be happy, listen to music, <laughs> dance if you want to, <laughs> and all the things. So thanks, Taylor. Thank you so much again, Natalia. I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to end here.